Rub up your engines! Bugatti became the first car manufacturer to make a car that went over 300 miles an hour on a Volkswagen test track in Germany. Yes, it was a modified version. You always need asterisks for this stuff because it's always modified things. When I went to a Formula One race and they're trying to tell me that the gasoline and the oil they used was 99% the same as the stuff you buy in your car is a bunch of nonsense. It's completely different stuff and they obviously modified the thing. You go buy one, it's not going to go over 300 miles an hour unless you haven't modified. <laughs> I mean, Bugatti's been a company that, hey, they've always been on the verge of bankruptcy forever. It's one of these rich man toy things, and now they're on the top. Who knows? They'll sell a handful of them now to ultra rich people who want to go 300 miles an hour in a car. I mean, hey, you can go 500 miles an hour anytime you want. Just get in a commercial plane and fly somewhere. <laughs> Now, of course, realize that Bucati is now owned by Volkswagen. They obviously bought him for a feather in their cap. So they can say that, oh, they make the fastest car in the world that people can buy. Because, you know, Volkswagen also owns Porsche. And they came out with the Porsche supercars that were almost a million bucks a piece. And all the purists laughed and said, you can't sell a thousand of those cars. They had them all sold before they even had one produced. Because there's that many rich people in the world these days. Everybody else in the world is like... Uh, <laughs> rich man's toys. Sting 853 says, what's more reliable, Dodge or Ford? <laughs> Ford by a long stretch. Dodge is their quality. The quality's been going downhill for ages. Anyways, I mean, they went bankrupt, and then a Canadian holding company took it off Mercedes. They were the really smart ones. And then they sold it to Fiat. They're not very well-made vehicles. The Fords are actually better made than they were a decade or two ago. They've increased their quality. So, so no brainer, the Fords are much better, especially the trucks. You want to get a big truck, get a Ford truck. Don't buy a Dodge truck. Tushar Yit says... 2010 Dodge Challenger, is it a good buy? Well, I'm not a Dodge fan by any stretch of the imagination, but their values drop like a stone. So, if it was in good shape, you could get a good price on one. The only problem is, people buy those things, the big V8 Hemis. They buy them for a reason, to drive like freaking maniacs. So they might have run that thing, as they used to say about horses, they rode them hard and put them up wet. It could be on its last legs. If you're going to buy one of those, pay a guy like me to check it out before you buy it. He might say, don't even touch it, it's falling apart. But if he says it's in decent shape and you get a better price on it, go right ahead. They can be fun. Just realize you got to get it checked out by a really good mechanic, because guys generally rag the heck out of those things. Justin... Fuster says, 69 Mercedes 280S, 14,000 miles, W108 chassis, goodbye or good, goodbye or goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you know, you always say I don't like Mercedes. That's an old Mercedes. And those old 280s were built like freaking tanks. Those things were strong vehicles. Now, I don't know how they're going to prove it's only got 14,000 miles on it. But if it really only is 14,000 miles and it runs and shifts good, what the heck? They were built like tanks. And if it's really 14,000 miles, nothing's going to be worn out yet. But it's so old. It's in the 60s. Now, on the one hand, Mercedes makes parts for all their cars. So you can always get parts for them. They're going to be relatively expensive. But that at all, a lot of the rubber is going to crack, leak fluids. It can be a real pain in the butt. But if it's really got 14,000 miles and they can prove it's cheap enough. It could be a fun weekend toy. Don't buy that thing. No one thinks it's going to be an everyday driver. That isn't going to happen. Hunter Sutherland says, my oil pressure light turns on when I brake my 2004 Honda Civic. Check your oil. If you're low on oil, it's all going to slosh. The pressure is going to drop. If it's not, change the oil pressure sending unit. They're real easy and cheap to do on that car. You can go to like AutoZone. They'll sell you the sending unit. It'll probably cost you 15 bucks or something. They can show you where it is. And if you don't have the tool that fits, they can sell you the little socket and change it. Pray that fixes it. Because if it doesn't fix it and you're full of oil, it means that you got an internal problem. The oil pump's wearing out or your engine's worn, the bearings are worn, and the pressure gets low when you stop and the engine starts idling lower. But a lot of times it's just... The oil pressure sending you it, or you're low on oil. Mary Ellen M says, what are your thoughts about mobile mechanic services like Wrench? I learned to fix cars at a corner Texaco gas station. My grandfather was a master mechanic. My father ran a station. I started my own business years later in Houston. I started as a mobile mechanic with just me, and I went around and fixed people's cars. But after, eh, like 10 years, 
I had to stop doing mobile stuff because the cars are getting so complicated. I would have to have so much equipment to carry with me. Like if you're going to work the air conditioning system, you'd have to have a recycling system that you'd have to carry with you because you can't make the refrigerant vent to the atmosphere. So it was a royal pain. I stopped doing it. If guys want to do brake jobs, things like that, yeah, but it's very hard to get really full service stuff on the road anymore. So I'm kind of leery about them today because there's so many things you can't have the equipment for. I mean, I got a lot of stuff here that runs on 120, 240 volts. Anybody, if they really had a big giant truck, like a big van, and had all the tools in them, they're asking for it because anytime they park it somewhere, people are going to break in and steal all their tools. Here, I got burglar alarms, cameras, and guns, so I don't have to worry about people ripping me off. But if I was driving a big truck with a lot of equipment on it, I don't have to worry about that. So not that many really good guys are going to put all their money and then do mobile stuff these days so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos remember to ring that bell